omuonge wolombude. Ama bakwasa. And today, our very first day, we have a line of great speakers for you, covering crucial aspects of journalism education in the 21st century. The question of journalism standards, for instance, will be covered by Alfred Ntonga, Deputy CEO of Nation Publications Limited. Using quality journalism to fight disinformation will be covered by Mr. William Bird, Director of Media Monitoring Africa. And Gwen Lister, head of the Namibia Media Trust, will talk about podcasting as a tool for sustainability, for advocacy, and for training, that is. But before that, let me welcome Professor Herman Wasserman, Professor of Media Studies and the Director of the Center for Film and Media Studies at the University of Cape Town. He is the author of several books. I counted 15 on his website. He has published widely on media, ethics, and democracy in Africa. I counted more than 50 book chapters on his website. And he has consulted for organizations such as the United Nations and the Center for International Media Assistance. He has given keynote addresses and invited lectures at universities worldwide, including Stanford, Yale, and the London School of Economics and Political Science. Professor Wasserman, it's great to have you here. And I would love to hand over the virtual microphone to you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for that uh, welcome. It's sometimes scary to uh, hear what uh, information is available on the, on the internet. Uh, thanks, Marcus, for that uh, warm and uh, generous welcome. Um, I was asked to say, give, give some remarks on the on journalism education in Southern Africa, the challenges, um, prospects, and so on. Um, and I gave this some thought, and of course, one could uh, could speak at um, much length about this. But um, I looked back at this year, and I thought that if there was ever been a year, has ever been a year in our recent collective global history that the importance of trustworthy, accurate, and ethical journalism became glaringly clear. It was this one, 2020. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic created the need for people to access trustworthy and reliable information in the midst of what the World Health Organization has called an infodemic, an overabundance of information, some of which can be misleading or even harmful. The sheer overabundance of information about the pandemic may even be detrimental to people's health, they warned. The organization said this overabundance of information can make it difficult to identify accurate evidence-based public health information and advice, it can contribute to anxiety, worry, and other mental health issues, uh, lead people to take misleading or dangerous advice, build fatigue, disinterest, and animosity towards public health messages, and encourage xenophobia, hate, and exclusion. So against this background of disinformation, uncertainty, and fear that we saw this year, journalism can not only provide factual certainty and even comfort in the context of a pandemic, but good journalism can literally save lives. So while the outbreak of the pandemic initially saw an increase in especially digital media use as people look for trustworthy sources of information, and in some places also a new turn to local news, Evidence is emerging that this trend is changing. Um, and people have already in some um, surveys said that, um, that the, you know, that the news media have exaggerated the crisis. And there's, this is perhaps a warning that alarmist and sensationalist reporting that isn't anchored in careful explanation and analysis could undermine trust in the news media further. So what has all this to do with journalism education? It goes without saying that if there is a demand for quality journalism, there's also a demand for quality journalism education. There shouldn't be, a sh there doesn't seem to be a shortage of journalism education on the continent. Uh, a mapping study that was just launched yesterday by Alan Finley for Wits Journalism showed that journalism education and training on the continent is indeed flourishing. I know you'll be hearing from Alan later in the program, so I won't plunder his report further. But it is clear from that report that journalism education and training centers are proliferating and growing. Um, 
But that leads us maybe not to ask a question around quantity, but a question around content and quality. What are these journalists being educated for? How are they being educated? And perhaps most importantly, I would argue, for what context are they educated? Are they educated in a way that is responsive, sensitive, and relevant for the context in which they work? So I would argue that journalism education in Southern African region has to focus both on competencies, but also on context. So let's look at this African context. I think we can highlight three features of this context within which journalism education takes place. First is sustainability. The second is digital disruption. And the third is political and social change. Let me say something very briefly about each of these categories and how I see them connected to journalism education. So sustainability. Although the pandemic has increased the demand for news, it ironically also became at the same time what has been called a media extinction event. So that's <laughs> ironic because there's a growth in interest and a need for journalism, but at the same time, lots of media also went under. The time tried advertising business model for journalism has been under pressure for a while. And with COVID lockdowns impacting on the economy, in some places, this model has all but collapsed, especially in smaller media outlets. We know that in the Southern African region, sustainability has been a major issue in the region for some time now, and the pandemic has only exacerbated this. Many publications around this continent have had to shut their doors already this year. Many journalists have either been retrenched or moved onto precarious contracts or forced into freelancing. Others, some outlets are experimenting with subscription models or donor funded models, membership models. And so sustainability is a major challenge and there's major changes afoot at the moment around that. And I think we are feeling this especially acute in the Southern African region. And why is this such an important aspect to touch on in the South African region? It's not only because we want media outlets to survive, people to have jobs, all of that is of course important, but sustainability is more than an economic issue, especially in the African context. Sustainability is linked to media freedom because weak media organizations are more vulnerable to state or elite pressure and capture. So journalism education would therefore have to nurture a young generation that can come with new ideas, generate new models and reinvent journalism for a different type of economy in the Southern African context, especially. A type of journalism that is viable and sustainable and that can resist pressures and that can um, stand up to, to power. So this might mean education in things like media management, branding, marketing, um, but also educating young journalists that they are keenly aware of this context in which they work so that they can be in tune with their audience's needs and that they can respond to those needs in a successful and sustainable manner. So that's just some brief ideas around sustainability. Let's look at digital disruption. And I know you'll be speaking about this in, at much length at this conference, and it's, it's a topic that is, it remains high on the agenda. So it's by now, I think, commonplace that a whole scale digital disruption has taken place in journalism worldwide. Shift of audiences from print to online has had economic implications, especially for print media, uh, but it has also had an impact on education and training. In this new converged landscape, journalists are required to be adept in a range of technical skills to enable them to collect and present news across a range of platforms and formats. Journalism education and training, and this includes upskilling and skills enhancement of working journalists, not only journalists that are currently being trained at universities and, and, and schools and colleges. These include journalists that often have to enhance and upskill uh, in mid-career. That upskilling, that training, would need to include digital competencies that are up to date, but again, sensitive to context, because the digital competencies that might work in a media saturated context like Europe or North America doesn't necessarily work here. Digital access in Southern Africa is often uncertain, unequal and unpredictable. So training in digital journalism have to take these circumstances into account. And one way of doing that is, for instance, looking at new ways of doing digital journalism, for instance, by offering training in mobile phone journalism. Uh, this conference is active on WhatsApp. I mean, WhatsApp is a very widely used platform. How can we train journalists to also use that for, for, for doing journalism? So these are some of the questions, I think, around digital disruption that we have to ask within the contextual specificities of Southern Africa. The last sort of 
category that I think is important is that of political and social change. In the rapidly evolving, shifting and often precarious Southern African context, we cannot get stuck in old binaries between skills, training and education. That's a debate that often rears its head. You know, um, people will say at universities, journalists learn all these critical skills and analysis, but when they come in the, in the newsroom, they cannot sub and they cannot do the technical work. Of course, that is really important. There's no question that journalists have to master practical skills such as interviewing, editing and writing. But again, without knowledge of context, such practical skills will add little to the public's understanding of their rapidly changing world. And this is why practical and digital competencies have to be complemented by education in critical skills. Critical skills is the terrain of the humanities and the social sciences, where imagination, interpretation, and especially empathy are cultivated. There's a danger, I think, that educators can chase the newest technological fads to such an extent that the more foundational contextual knowledge is left behind. And this is not, again, not only true of upcoming journalists, but also working journalists. I recently was involved with a study of training needs of journalists in Namibia with Christy Kilder of Survey Warehouse. And again, I know that you're going to discuss this report in more detail in the conference, so I'll uh, very be refer to that very briefly. But that, that report, that study showed that for these journalists, some of the the, the skills that they saw as very important and crucial were basic foundational skills like news gathering and reporting, researching and pitching stories ideas, spotting fake news, interviewing, investigative journalism, and very interesting ethics and law and human rights and democracy. The knowledge of ethics, law, and human rights and democracy also counted among the most important skills that working journalists felt they needed to work in the Southern African context. So in this Southern African context and also wider afield on the continent, journalists have to often negotiate a very difficult social and political world. And that world ranges from issues around poverty and inequality with that impacts on access to media, all the way to uh, hard threats such as internet shutdowns, threats and attacks on journalists, often with impunity. So how do we educate journalists in a way that can make them resilient to these challenges and pressures and at the same time contribute to positive social change on the continent? I think that for me is a key question. I don't have all the answers or maybe not even any answers to them, but I think that is the important question. How do we educate journalists in a way that help them to have both the competencies, the, the technical and practical competencies, but also the contextual knowledge that help them to respond creatively and constructively to this context. So the point is not to only stamp out mis and disinformation in this time of an infodemic. Journalism education should help educate journalists to also produce good information, not only resist bad information, but also produce good information. And good information is information that is contextually rooted, that is sensitive to the needs, fears, anxieties, and joys of its audience. It is journalism that speaks truth to power and connects communities and listens to the voiceless. This is the world that we are preparing to tomorrow's journalists for, but it's also the world in which today's working journalists often have to reposition themselves, reskill, upskill, and adapt. So I'll close. I want to close with a quote from the renowned Guardian journalist Gary Young. Gary Young, um, some of you might know him, a brilliant journalist, and he has recently taken up an academic position in sociology, like many old journalists like myself also do, you know, journalists don't die, they just become professors. Um, if you're asking why journalism students should study sociology, political economy and writing, here's his answer. So what he's saying, I think, says, yes, learn to type and sub, learn to interview, to find a story, but also how to imagine yourself in the shoes of others and ask difficult questions around where you stand in relation to power. Gary Young says the following, he says, there's a phrase in journalism, when dogs bite people, it's not a story. When people bite dogs, it's a story. But sometimes you also have to ask yourself, who owns these dogs? And why is it that only the same people keep getting bitten? Thank you. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, such a, a, a catchy uh, closing uh, sentence right there. We have to ask 
the right questions. Thanks so much, Professor Wasserman, uh, for the keynote speech. I think we have been challenged. Uh, there are so many disruptions, uh, so to say, um, that journalism is facing on the continent or Southern Africa to be specific. But how do we train the journalists to be resilient to those challenges, but at the same time to have the competences they need um, uh, in, this, in this sector? So in the course of the next three days, we are going to have discussions around these issues. Uh, Professor Wasserman has challenged us, but also has kind of given or shaped the conversation that we're going to have in the next three days or so. We hope that the rich discussions on how media training institutions can tap into each other's expertise um, in making journalism education more relevant and of high standards or quality. Thanks so much, Professor Wasserman. If you have any comments, you have questions, we're not going to take questions right now, but if you have any questions or something, he has triggered something um, that you have been thinking about, please do post it in the comment section uh, at the bottom of your Zoom page. If it is a question, please post it in the Q&A. And I think the presentations that we're going to have from now are going to also focus on some of the things that Professor Wasman has already mentioned and get into more detail. And then we'll have some plenary take questions and we'll get responses from the presenters. Thanks again, uh, Professor Wasman. Omuonge wolombudi. Amaba kwasa.